Hello guys, welcome to Bhavna's Online Academy. So in this video, we are going to learn AS3 which speaks of cash flow statement. Yes, so this is the part 1 of the video which is going to cover all your concepts and there will be a part 2 to this video which will cover all your ICI illustrations and your ICI or test your knowledge questions. So please make sure to watch both of the videos to get a complete coverage of this. And as well as the handwritten notes that I'll be using today will be available for free on my Telegram channel. So you can take the complete benefit out of this because this notes especially contains the question points too. Question specific points too. So it will help you in solving the questions much more faster. Yes. So that's the details. So without any further ado, now let's get into the video guys. So AS3. What does it speak of? Cash flow statement. It says that you have to prepare a statement. What is this statement going to tell you? The statement is going to tell you that what are the cash flows in the company. That means what are the cash inflows and what are the cash outflows in a company during a year. This it is going to say. So here what they are saying cash flow statement. So cash flow statement it provides details about how the cash is generated. How the cash is coming out you know from which activities you are getting cash that means what all the incomes you know that you are receiving in cash that you are going to understand those details will be there in the cash flow statement as well as how is it being applied that means how you are expensing it off that means today you have earned a cash income or uh, you have made a cash sale and earned some income so this income where and all have you expensed it where and where all you have applied it that you are going to understand from this cash flow statement because it's going to contain both incomes as well as the expenses okay by the entity due during the period so during a particular period what is the cash generated and how you have applied it these two aspects you are going to understand okay so they have bifurcated this cash flow statement is going to be bifurcated into three activities for better understanding of the users and for better presentation first is operating activity then investing activity then financing activity okay so let's understand what these three activities are about and then we will understand it in more detail that how will you bifurcate it okay so first is what is operating activity so cash flows from operating activities means all the cash inflows and outflows which is leading to operating activity so operating activities means principal revenue generating activities that means if a business is running what is its core business activity so the cash inflow and outflow that you get from a core business activity it is known as the principal revenue generating activity that means at first place what is that that is generating you revenue so so now for example let's take that i'm a uh, you know i have an academy and i teach there okay so what will be my principal generating activity here principal revenue generating activity selling of classes is going to be my principal revenue generating activities from this classes whatever money i get okay so that money will be the cash flows that i'm getting from my operating activity now this money i go i invest somewhere from there i'm getting some income all these are secondary activities this will not come under operating activity this will come under the other two activities you are going to read but primarily what is my job what is my core business what is my core business my core business is taking classes and running the academy so related to that whatever uh, cash flows are being uh, you know happening that will come under operating activities now to run this classes i have taken an academy on rent and i am paying the rent of such academy so now this is also directly related to the classes i provide okay so this is also directly relating to the principal revenue generating activity if i don't have that academy i will not be able to run my classes so it is important for my principal revenue generating activity to work correct so this will also come under operating activities only so now here you see the sale of goods or services that means my sale of classes or if i'm suppose uh, manufacturing concern then the sale of goods from that whatever cash i am getting all that will come under operating activities okay next here they are saying that fees royalties or commissions that you get pay all that will also come here fine and then finally the cash that you paid to the suppliers of goods or services suppose you know what happens is uh, i am giving my um suppose let's take an example that i have a manufacturing concern and i'm uh, supposedly i am making some biscuits okay and what happens is the raw material for the biscuit okay it can be flour maida or whatever it is so those raw material i get it from a supplier 
okay and to this supplier i have to make payment correct i have to make payment to this supplier so that he will provide me the raw material now this payment that i am making to the supplier in un it is it operating activity or not answer is yes it is an operating activity because to produce this bis biscuit which is my principal revenue generating activity i need this raw material so to have this raw material i need to pay to the supplier so it's directly linked correct so that's why payment to supplier of goods or services is also included in the operating activities so sale also comes here then the purchase that you make to make such sale that also will come here and fees royalties commission all of that is also going to come here because it is directly linked to making the sale okay if i don't uh, may pay the royalty or if i don't get that royalty or if i don't make that commission then i'll not have that sale correct so that's why these all also come here so that was all about your operating activities let's move on to investing activities investing activities means from the money that you earn from the money that you earn from the operating activity you will take that money and go and invest it somewhere correct you will uh, you know either purchase long term assets or sell long term assets so you'll go and invest it somewhere so that from that you, from there you get some income correct so what you can basically do is you can go and make a deposit somewhere or make a fd somewhere or maybe you can buy an asset somewhere so what this our investing activity will help you do is you will help you what you will do here is you will mostly purchase or sell long term assets and this will in turn help you in increasing your business in the future so today i am purchasing a plant and machinery so tomorrow using that machinery i am going to increase my sales in the future okay so cash flows from purchase and sale of long term assets will get included under investing activities so example is what example is purchase or sale of fixed assets investment and then if you are going to invest in shares and securities that will also come here because you're going taking your money and investing it somewhere and the income from also from purchase or sale of leave this if you see this investment in securities or share what you will get here what you'll get investment in security shares share if you go and invest in turn you will get some dividend income or if you invest in debentures or bonds you will get some interest income so all these income also will be part of an investing activities because you're going and investing somewhere and from that you're getting income okay so that will come under any cash flow related to this this purchase or sale all those cash flows will come under investing activity next is financing activity that means here anything related to equity and borrowings that means issue and redemption of equity and borrowings so what is the, so your question will be what is the difference between so what is the difference between shares and securities here and what is the difference between equity here both you are saying in investing it will come then you are saying in financing it will come financing means here you are raising money here you don't have money or raising money that means by the issue of shares you are raising some money or by the issue of uh, borrowings you are raising some money okay and then after certain point you will redeem it also okay that will come under financing activity but under investing activity you already have money that you are going and investing it somewhere you already have money that you are going and investing it somewhere here you don't have money you are raising the money here so investing when you are going to have money or money in your hand you will first go and purchase some securities or shares then after a certain point you can go and sell the same securities or shares so all those will come under investing activity whereas in financing activity this equity or borrowings you are going to you know your company is going to issue here this uh, shares or securities is going to be of other company whereas this equity or borrowing is going to be of our own company here you will issue your own equity shares your own borrowings and from that you will raise money and after a certain point of time you are also going to redeem that okay and then when you are going to um, you know uh, raise borrowings you will also have to pay interest on it you also will have to pay interest on it when you are going to raise in the form of equity you will have to pay dividend on it so all those will also come under financing activities only so on issue of shares or securities you raise the money then when you are buying back the shares or securities that means now you are telling the shareholders that shareholder shareholder please listen this is the shareholder okay telling the shareholder that you have my shares correct now you return it back to me in turn of that i'll give you money so you basically are buying back your own shares you are going to buy your own shares back into the company itself so here you are going to spend money the same way when you are redeeming your own debentures or bonds there you will have to spend money so all this will happen so these are your three activities so what are your three activities your three activities were operating activities which is related to principal revenue generating activities then you have investing activity which is related to investments long term assets etc sale and purchase of long term assets and then finally you have financing activity which is related to 
issuing and redemption of your equity and borrowings okay so these are the three activities and if you understood this three activities it will be very much easier for you to now prepare a cash flow statement okay so now let's start with that okay yes so first now we are going to see what are the methods of preparation of cash flow statement okay so like i told you it will be split into three parts first you'll have your op operating activities then comes your investing activity then comes your financing activity so like this you will have to split your cash flow statement into three parts and then make the cash flow statement so first starting with what is your cash flow from operating activities okay so what are operating activities i told you it is a principal revenue generating activity so principally where you're getting your revenue from that activity will be known as operating activity now you can make this operating activity a cash flow from operating activities that means what cash inflows you have had and what cash flows you have outflow you have had due to this operating activity you can um, you know prepare yeah, or if you can find it out by two methods one is direct method other is indirect method now what is the difference between direct method and indirect method for investing activity it stands there is only one method and financing activity is also one method there is no bifurcation like direct and indirect only one way of finding it out but for operating activity alone there are two ways of finding it out first let me make you understand what is direct method direct method means pick and drop method so here what happens is let me give you an example suppose there are one two three four five six seven activities suppose there are seven activities okay so now what you will see is you will go through each one activity you will go through each activity one by one and you will see which is directly related to operating activity which is directly related which cash flow is related directly related to operating activity that you are going to pick and write it here that you are going to pick and write it here suppose activity one it is not directly related to operating activity you will leave it now now suppose activity two was related to operating activity you will take that operating um, activity four was related to operating activity you will take that and you will come and take that alone and write it in the statement you will take up that alone and come and write it in the cash flow statement so it is like a pick and drop method you review all the activities and whichever is directly related and whichever is directly related to operating activities you will pick it up and write it in your statement so what you will do you will identify all the cash collections and all the cash payments that have been made related to operating activities and you will pick and drop it here in the statement okay so now what are the cash collections and what are the cash payments now let's see the examples of it or rather you can remember this format rather you can remember this format so that it's easier for you to solve this sum okay so let me start one by one okay so first they are saying that you have received cash from two places one from the sale of goods and services i told you these are the principal revenue generating activities so the goods and services from that sale whatever cash you are receiving will come here only then cash received from trade receivables or debtors so now usually when you do a sale sale can be done in two methods one it can be a credit sale or other it can be done as a cash sales correct so here cash sales because you are preparing a cash flow statement that is going to come that's what we have read in the first line here correct then when we speak of credit sales you will not write it in the cash flow statements because when you are making a credit sale you only give out goods but in turn of it you don't get any money you haven't got any money at yes maybe as yet maybe in the future you will get some money against it now what happens is suppose in the future when you get money against it suppose in the future when you get money against it you have to come and write it here that's what they are saying cash that you have received from trade receivables or debtors so because earlier you would have made some sale at that point you wouldn't have got the cash now when you're getting the cash please record it here okay so these are the two cash received okay so this is what you majorly have under operating activity direct method now what are the cash payments so here i've written one two three four five payments that you have to understand first is cash purchases so now to manufacture a good you might need some raw material okay so to make to get the raw material you might have made some purchases and that you might have paid in cash so those cash purchases will come here the same way you might have earlier made some purchase okay and at that time you wouldn't have paid them now you are paying it to them so those creditors to those suppliers to the trade payables who earlier you weren't able to pay now you're paying that payment also you have to that payment also you have to record it here okay then third one so these two were relating to the above cash received also so cash received from sale cash paid for purchases cash received from uh, debtors cash 
paid to creditors so like then these four activities were matching activities which you have understood apart from that there are three more payments that you have to understand so first is payment for operating expenses like i told you if i'm conducting a ca classes i'll be conducting it in an academy and in that uh, and for that academy i will have to pay what i'll have to pay rent and without paying this rent i'll not be able to make my classes or i'll not be able to run my principal revenue generating activities it is very very important that this activity is there so i can do that sales okay so this rent will also come so operating expenses that means directly related to that goods or services or the production of goods or services or sale of goods or services whatever direct operating expenses you have please record it here so there will be a rent there will be salary and there will be electricity so salary means to the people or to the laborer who are working to the accounts department who is working to them if you are paying salary electricity means to run that machine if you are using some electricity that electricity all these will come under operating expenses operating expenses nothing that you understand what you understand is direct expenses in your costing okay next is payment for wages and salaries yes the same thing salary i've covered it here and then payment for income tax so on relation to these goods or services okay the production or sale of goods or services if you are paying some income tax that will also get included here okay so that payment also you reduce and finally adjustments for extraordinary items that means if it is not related to invest investing or financing activities that means some loss by fire some you what you have done is you have kept your inventory in the you have kept your inventory that is suppose your finished goods or raw material in your factory and the factory what happened it got on fire the factory got on fire now what has happened you have incurred loss because of this so it is an extraordinary item this does not happen every year it's an extraordinary item that once in a blue moon this has happened so this loss what you are going to do is you are going to adjust it here so this loss you are going to adjust it here so adjustment for extraordinary item it should not be related to investing or financing now this inventory raw material finished goods is a principal revenue generating items now this is related to operating activity only so that extraordinary item will come here okay so if you do all these adjustments you will understand what is your cash flow from operating activities so you what you did you took whatever cash you have received whatever payments you have made and anything if it's extraordinary i have removed that also so now by doing all these from operating activities what and all cash and flows you have done what and all cash and flows or cash outflows you have done you will be able to understand so that is your cash flow from operating activities using the direct method using the direct method i hope you understood this so next we are going to understand something known as indirect method so indirect method i have uh, written here that exclude the unwanted method exclude the unwanted method yes so for this let me take you to a trading and pnl account that i have made here so this is basically a trading account a normal trading account okay so here let's see what and all is given so now let's understand this trading and pnl account okay so first what happens in trading account you will have your opening stock then you'll make some purchases and related to that there'll be some direct expenses and finally you'll make some sales from which you will earn profit and then you have your closing stock also so this is your trading and pnl account trading account from then what happened gross profit gets carried over to your pnl account so gross profit will come here and then you have your indirect expenses and indirect income and finally you come upon your net profit before tax and after net profit before tax if you reduce your tax expense you will come to net profit after tax okay so this is how basically it has been split okay so here what happens is that let's first understand about indirect expense then about indirect income and then i will come about net profit after tax so in indirect expenses you can split this indirect expenses into three parts first is your operating expenses that means your uh, depreciation related to the machine by which you are producing your goods or services amortization then your salary of the accounting staff or all the wages for the laborers all these are related to operating activities your principal revenue generating activities your core business so all those expenses will come here which will be known as your operating expenses second you have something known as non operating expenses what is non operating expense non operating expense means if you have some interest on debentures okay that means you have what you have done is is an expense that means you have raised debentures and for that debentures to those debenture holders 
who are holding your company's debentures you are paying them interest you are paying them interest that's why it's an expense correct you are paying them interest so this is not related to operating activity but now if they are getting the debentures from you or if you are giving them interest that is not going to help you you know make a finished goods or deliver a service or make a product so this is not directly uh, you know related or any way related to your operating activity so this is a non operating expense the same way you have now sold a fin f fixed asset it was lying in your company no one was using it it was uh, now obsolete so now what you did was you sold that fixed asset and when you are selling it you incurred a loss now this loss will also be calculated as an expense only but this is not related to operating activity it's not related to your goods or services that was related about some fixed asset that was lying in your company as an obsolete item so this will also come under non operating expenses so indirect expenses include operating expenses also non operating expenses also and extraordinary expenses also so these are basically nothing but pnl item now i bifurcated them into whether they are operating whether they are non operating or whether they are extraordinary extraordinary means loss due to fire okay so this is an extraordinary expense okay so this was all about expenses now when we speak about indirect income that you get so in indirect income you have nothing known as operating income because all these operating income is what has come as sales here correct so there is nothing known as operating income so there is only two things one is non operating income and extraordinary income so what is non operating income anything other than sale of goods or services will come here like you had made some investment or you had uh, you know purchased some debentures now on that you are getting some interest now on that if you are getting some interest as an income due to the investment you have made that is a non operating income the same way the sale of fixed asset if you are getting some profit on it that is that is also a non operating income just the exact opposite of non operating expenses your non operating income then extraordinary income is also the exact opposite of extraordinary expense which is nothing but the fire loss you had okay the loss will be your expense but the insurance claim that you have received for such loss the insurance claim that you receive for such loss is an extraordinary income it does not happen every year once in a blue moon it has happened so you are also getting an insurance claim against it so that will be your extraordinary income so this is how you split your indirect expense and indirect income okay by doing all of this then you get your net profit before tax from that if you reduce your tax expense you will get your net profit after tax now once you get your net profit after tax what you do is after payment of tax you can either do three of the above things one you can distribute dividends from this or you can just take this net profit and transfer it to your general reserve or you can just retain it in the pnl account and do nothing about it three things you can do one is do nothing just retain it in the pnl account or second thing please transfer it to general reserve or third thing you can uh, you know uh, split dividend out of it okay so i hope you understood this trading at pnl account now using this only i'm going to make you understand your indirect method so now in indirect method when you come in indirect method one what they tell is indirect method what you did you had a lot of activities and from that activities you selected which one was going to be an operating activity and wrote it here what will be operating income what will be operating expense like that you picked each and every activity and wrote it here but now in indirect method that like that you are not going to do what you are going to do instead is that they will give you they will not give you each activity separate by separate okay what they'll give you is they'll give you a big box and in that they'll be operating also investing also financing also like that many activities are going to be there now what you have to do is you have to follow something known as the elimination method so whatever is not an operating activity please eliminate that so at the end you will be left with what operating activity here what happened you had operating activity investing activity financing activity in direct method what you did you directly picked oh this is operating activity this is operating activity and wrote it separately but in indirect method what you do is you do not uh, separate anything you have a cluster of things in that you have operating also uh, investing also and financing also here you eliminate the investing activity and financing activity so that from that cluster you are left only with your operating activity items okay i hope you understood what is indirect method so you exclude whatever the unwanted is there that means your investing um your financing and other anything which is not operating you remove it and by that you'll get your cash flow from operating activities okay so starting first what happened so now we read no here So now, what do we want from this uh, trading and PNL account? So from this trading and PNL account, what we are going to do is, we are going to start from here, and then we are going to come until the top. Okay, yes. 
so first what we are going to do is we are going to start from the bottom and then go up to the ladder so that we are able to find out the operating expenses and the operating income and the operating income and then we will be done with the question okay so starting from the below part okay if you exclude until here no if you are able to exclude until here your work will be done because these all are unwanted things if you exclude all of these things which is non operating or extraordinary you will be left with operating only and then your job is done so first what we do we start from proposed dividend transfer to general reserve and retained in pnl account okay see here so you take proposed dividend plus transfer to general reserve plus retained in pnl account if you add all of this you will come up with your profit before tax you will come up with what your profit profit before tax i mean sorry it should be profit after tax yes i've written it wrongly here so this should be profit after tax and this will be profit before tax okay so you will come to your profit after tax as per pnl account in that if you again add back your tax amount you will come to profit before tax at the pnl account so now that we have come up to the profit before tax amount from this you have to eliminate what you have to eliminate your non operating you have to eliminate your extraordinary items and there is something known as non cash items also which you have to eliminate if you eliminate all of these things somewhat you will come near the operating profit okay so first is extraordinary expenses or income so if it's an extraordinary expense you have to add it back because to come to this profit you would have lessed it now you have to reverse this effect so if you have to reverse the effect of an expense you have to add it back so if it's an expense add it back if it's an income reduce it okay because what happened to come to net profit what would you have done you would have less all the expenses and added all the income now we want to remove this effect so we have to do the opposite of it so now you will add the expense and remove the income so if you do so you will be able to do the reverse calculation and come up to operating activities fine so whatever extraordinary expenses are there added back extraordinary income is there less it like your loss due to fire etc then your non operating expenses added back non operating income you have to less it okay so non operating means anything which is leading to investing or financing activity that is not operating example your profit or loss on sale of fixed asset or your in so fixed asset i told you long term assets the profit or uh, i mean the purchase or sale or any profit or gain on it will directly go to investing activity only then interest income or interest expense so if it's an interest income that means i made some investments somewhere and they are getting me income so that will come under investing in interest expense means i have raised money and on it i am paying some interest expense that will come under financing activity so like that all these items are given in the question please remove that effect also please remove the effect of extraordinary expense or income and non operating expense or income and then finally there is something known as non cash expenses here we are what we are finding we are finding what is the cash inflow and cash outflow here now if there is some non cash item you have to remove that example your depreciation it is an operating activity only but it is a non cash item so remove it then bad debts return off okay so these all things are here there is no movement of when you depreciating a machine any cash is going out no same way when there is a bad debtor okay who has to give you money now he is not giving you money so you remove that uh, debtor name from your list now because of removing the debtor name from your list will you get some money or will you have to pay some money the answer is no so here there is no cash involved in these transactions so these will also be added back because from your net profit all these non cash item depreciation also was it shown as a expense only no now you are saying that these all expenses effect should not be given so you have to add it back so that you are able to come at your operating uh profit okay operate cash flow operating cash flow okay next is by doing all of this you will get your operating profit before working capital changes operating profit before working capital changes now what happens sometimes is that let's take the example of current liabilities okay so trade payable last year it was 1000 rupees this year it is 800 rupees so what has happened 200 rupees of trade payable has gone down 200 rupees of trade payable has reduced 200 rupees of trade payable has reduced now what does this mean when the trade payable reduces it means you have paid off the trade payable what you have done you have paid off the trade payable so here the cash must be involved if you are paying to someone you have to involve cash no so you would have paid it to them so that way 
so that effect you will have to give here so what you do when there is a reduction in uh, current liabilities okay a trade payable is what your trade payable is a current liability correct so here when it has reduced it means you have made a cash you have made a what you have made a cash outflow so for that you will be reduce it from your operating profit so the cash outflow you will reduce it from your operating profit the same way increase in current liabilities you will add it back so if it's an increase in current liabilities add it back if it's a decrease in current liabilities you reduce it okay the same way now if there is a decrease in current assets that means there was trade receivable trade receivable from 1000 it became 900 that means 100 has reduced that means you would have paid sorry you would have got the money it was receivable to you last year 1000 was receivable this year only 900 was receivable that means 100 rupees you have already received so if you have received it what is it it is a cash inflow it is a cash inflow so you will add it it's a cash inflow so you will add it the yc versa if it's an increase in current assets you will reduce it okay so these things you have to do okay i hope you understood this so you have to take a balance sheet compare and see if it has increased or decreased and whether it is a current asset or a current liability and likewise you have to do see if it's a cash outflow or cash inflow and um do it i will suggest you that remember only two things one is if it's a decrease in current liabilities that means if trade payable has decreased i've paid them so cash outflow decrease in current assets means decrease in current uh, current assets means trade receivable has been decreased that means i am i am to receive less this year because i have received it already 100 rupees i have received it already so this year i have to receive less only okay so that will be added back because it's a cash inflow so if it's a decrease in current assets it's a cash inflow added if it's a decrease in current liabilities it is a cash outflow less is done the other one will be your yc versa okay i hope you understood this now if you do all of this you will get your cash flow from operations and finally from that if there is any income tax that you have paid that is also removed then it will be cash flow from operating activities you'll finally arrive at your cash flow from operating activities i hope you understood this so quickly let me run you through the indirect method first you find out you have to now first find out net profit before tax so for that you take the proposed dividend transfer to general reserve retained in pnl account and find out profit after tax from that if it if any tax has been charged in your pnl account you add it okay so you'll get your profit before tax from that any extraordinary item or non-operating item or non-cash item you please adjust so that you can get your operating item from operating item also this current assets and current liabilities adjustment you have to do after you do you will get your cash flow from operations so from that if any income tax you have paid in cash then reduce it so that you are able to get your cash flow from operating activities and this was your indirect method so here what you do you do the reverse approach you take a whole cluster and from that you keep on eliminating so that you can come up to your operating activity whereas uh, direct method was a different approach okay so this was all about your cash flow from operating activities direct method and indirect method okay and if the question is silent you have to follow indirect method only or maybe question might provide you some data which will indicate you whether you have to follow a direct method or indirect method otherwise the indirect method can be followed okay i hope you understood this so that was all about your cash flow from operating activities now only two more activities are left which is cash flow from investing activity and cash flow from financing activity if we understand these both then only very little part will be less so cash flow from investing activities means where you are applying the funds that you are getting so you are going to basically go and invest invest it somewhere okay so what you are doing is you are purchasing you purchase a fixed asset in that you are going to pay cash that will come here cash you have paid for purchase of investment that will also come here so here when you're purchasing a fixed asset or purchasing an investment your cash outflow will happen you will pay out cash so both will be reduced okay and then when you're uh, you know selling the fixed asset whatever you had purchased now you're selling the fixed asset or selling the investment here you will receive cash so those both will get added okay and here what you have to also remember is when you're doing this uh, fixed asset or uh, investments basically you learn some income from it also okay you will get income from it also so here that income like uh, when you are uh, you know suppose investments you are making in shares so here you will uh, receive income of dividend so dividend received you have to add uh, because it's a cash inflow the same way when debentures you are making an investment in from there you will receive interest income so that interest income will also get added to the investing activity all these things are clear i hope okay so when you are doing the sale of fixed asset sometimes what will happen is you will either incur a gain or loss 
correct they will not give you directly the sale amount or the cash that you have received from sale so now you have to find out how much cash you have received from sale so what they'll tell you in the question they'll give you that book value of a, a fixed asset is 100 rupees they have sold it at a loss of 20 rupees so by selling how much have you received your book value was 100 you sold at a loss of 80 you have received 80 rupees correct so that is what they are trying to tell you so if book value is given and gain or loss of gain or loss is given please adjust it and find out how much cash you have received from such sale okay and the same way when you're purchasing an investment you might have to pay some brokerage related to it so those related expenses will also come under investing activities only fine now once after all of this is done if when you are investing if you have paid any capital gain tax okay uh, any income tax that you have that you have paid uh, relating to this uh, investing activity like your capital gain tax that also will be taken care here so whatever tax you know uh, you are uh, paying whatever activity it is relating to there it will come generally it will come under um, sorry generally it is going to come under operating activity only but if it is a special tax that means a capital gain tax which is related to assets it will come under investing activity the same way if it's a dividend distribution tax it is when you distribute the dividend as a company so it is related to your financing activity because you issue the dividend correct so that is related to financing activity so there it will come that income that tax will come there so relating to each activity generally it is operating but if any specific ones are given, you then have to charge it to that specific activity only. Okay, so that was all about your investing activity. So there were two cash received and two cash paid and then two types of income. Okay. Next is cash flow from financing activity. That means the sources of funds from where you raise the funds. Okay. So here either you can, um, you know, raise from issue of share capital or debentures or loan also you can take so from there you will receive cash and when you are redeeming those share capital or paying back that debentures or paying back that loan repaying that loan at that time you will lose money so that is your cash paid for redemption or repayment let's say so one time when you issue you will get the cash when you repay you will uh, go out of cash that means cash outflow will happen after that related to these issue of share capital loans or debentures what you'll do is the people who are purchasing it to them you will get give some income correct so you will give some interest income for the people who are giving you money as money in the form of loan to them you have to pay interest or you have you know has uh, you have a share capital okay you are issued share capital and during the year you also announced bonus so you have also announced dividend for the shareholders so that will also come here so dividend if you have paid to your shareholders or interest you have paid to your uh, debenture holders or loan holders that also will get reduced here because it is directly related to your financing activities from where you are raising funds and then if there is any underwriting commission that you have paid related to issue of shares that will also come here okay now once all of this is done the income tax is paid if it is relating to financing activities now this ddt cdt these and all are not there but in case if they pick a older question and give it to you you must know i don't know ddt that means dividend distribution tax should come under financing activities under the income tax paid section okay so i hope you understood this financing activity also fine now once you have find out you know what is your cash flow from uh, operating activity and then cash flow from um, investing activity and cash flow from financing activity all these three cash flows you will write it here a plus b plus c from your operating from your investment and from your financing so all these cash flows you will write here as net cash flows from all activities in that what you will do the opening balance of cash and cash balance that means during the start of the year you had 100 rupees as cash with you and during the year by doing operating activities investing activities and financing activities suppose uh, you have got another cash of suppose 500 rupees so 500 plus 100 your end closing balance of cash should be 600 okay so you would have to take the net cash flows then you'll add the opening balance to it and finally you'll arrive at your closing balance of cash and cash equivalents okay so when i'm saying when we speak here about uh, opening balance of cash and cash equivalents what does cash and cash equivalents means so your cash balance your bank balance and any investment which has a maturity of three years okay maturity of three years sorry not three years maturity of three months or less 
okay some short term investment you have made that can be taken as your cash and cash equivalents why only short term why only 3 months or less it's because you know these um, cash and cash equivalents only include those securities which are marketable securities that means easily if you want to go and sell in the market today it will be able to sell so highly liquid means easily you will be able to encash those uh, securities and it does not have the risk of change in value so today one value tomorrow one value like that it does not have any change in value so it is like your cash only that means it is cash but it is in another form so today if you go and sell it you will get cash in return easily and the value will also remain the same only so that will come under your cash in cash equivalents i hope you understood this so this was all about your major part of your cash flow cash flow from operating cash flow from uh, investing cash flow from financing and how you prepare that cash flow statement okay and now finally we are going to uh, discuss some points to remember okay these are like question specific points which will help you in solving the questions easily okay so sometimes in question you may have something known as foreign currency cash flow some foreign transaction might be there and they would have given you the numbers in dollar now how are you going to show that in your cash flow statement at what value will you you know convert it so you have to show you have to make it into inr or into functional currency by using the exchange rate at the date of transaction so whenever the transaction happened at that date what was the inr rate prevailing or what was the exchange rate prevailing at that price itself you please convert it okay so that was related to your foreign currency cash flows next is foreign currency bank balance so these were like normal transactions so day to day transaction that you can uh, you know convert it at date of transaction whatever exchange rate was going on with that itself now foreign bank balance or the year end you have some bank balance correct which is of a foreign bank suppose 1000 dollars you have in your bank now this 1000 dollars how are you going to show it in your books so you have to convert it in convert it at the year end using the closing rate so at the end of the year whatever rate is going on suppose 50 rupees is going on and that you please convert and show it as 50000 rupees okay next they are saying that you know what sometimes happens is between the opening balance between the opening bank balance and closing bank balance there is a difference starting there was only um suppose 980 dollars now this 980 dollars of bank balance has become 1000 dollars now this has become 1000 dollars and now you have to restate and write it in our inr so here what you will do this 1000 dollars you will multiply it with the closing rate and find out your closing bank balance correct now but here there are two things that you have to keep in mind you have to give effect of two things one is your interest income the other one is your exchange gain so the amount that has gone from 980 to 1000 so here you have around 20 dollars of 20 dollars of interest you have earned on this bank okay so sometimes it happens when you deposit money in the bank as your normal bank account or normal savings account and on that they will pay they will keep on paying you some interest correct so like that the bank has paid them interest of 20 dollars because they had a balance in the bank of 980 dollars so this 20 dollars is nothing but your interest income it okay so how will you find out your interest income in inr it is going to be what is your closing balance which is 1000 dollars what is your opening balance which is 980 dollars so 20 dollars is your interest income multiply it with the closing rate itself so what are closing rate 50 is prevailing in the market multiply it with the 15 and find out your interest income then you have something known as exchange gain so what happens at the year start the uh, uh, what do we say at the year start the price was uh, $1 equal to 40 rupees at the year end it became 50 so year start it was how much 40 year end it became 50 so due to that some exchange gain also we would have got so cal uh, closing rate will be 50 opening rate will be 40 so 10 rupees of exchange gain you have on what balance will you calculate it on your opening balance because 980 is what is there from the start till then this extra 20 dollars so you have earned it towards the end only from start to end what was the 980 dollars so only 980 dollars also has seen the opening phase and has seen the closing phase also so the exchange gain should be allocated to it only and not to the newly joined member of 20 dollars so 980 is a old member so you have to give them the benefit of exchange gain so it is going to be closing rate minus opening rate into opening balance so if you do so you will find out your exchange gain also okay So this was about your first thing that foreign cash balance, foreign bank balance. If it is given in the question, what you have to do, and here you have to remember that this exchange gain which is there, you know, how will you account for in your cash flow statement? You have to deduct it from your net profit before tax because this is an extraordinary gain. Okay, this is not generally that you get every year. Okay, so this is something extraordinary that because this time, you know, the markets worked out well, you are getting money in return. 
okay and then you have to add it back to the opening balance of cash and cash equivalent so from one place if you are reducing other place you have to add it so you have to add it to the opening balance of cash and cash equivalent there you'll go and add that exchange gain okay so two effects you have to remember reduce from net profit before reduce from net profit before tax and add it to the opening balance of cash and cash equivalents so this was your first point which is done second is uh, second and third point is not any question related point that is specifically given in your as but i've still inculcated that when you are making a debtor account or creditor account what do you need from a debtor account that how much cash you have received from the debtor what how what do you need from creditor account how much cash you have paid to the creditor so that you are able to do your operating activities under direct method so for that what you can do is write your opening balance brought down which is your opening balance write down the closing balance also and then write what is the sales amount that you have done during if you do all of this the balancing figure it will automatically the balancing figure will automatically be the cash that you have received from debtors which is in bank okay and then the next one is same with creditors you have to write your opening balance you have to write your closing balance and you have to write how much you have purchased during the year if you do all of this itself you will be left with the balancing figure of how much cash you have paid to the creditors so what are the balancing figure is that much you have paid to the creditors so this was about your debtor account and creditor account next is they are saying that if the entity is in financial institution the entity is in what financial institution that means it is a bank so when it is a bank the operating activities of a bank are different from a normal person so today i am if i am going to give a loan to someone it is my investing activity because from that loan i'll earn interest in the future but now the same loan if i am giving as a bank it is my operating activity because this is where i'm earning this is my you know core business activity this is where i earn my bread and butter from so like that these two will have to take a separate stand now suppose you give loan to the customer or loan you the customer repays you the loan or you know you have received from interest or dividend okay so you have invested something somewhere and from there if you are uh, receiving the interest or dividend that will also come under operating activity and then interest that you have paid um on any debentures or loans that will also come under operating activity only so what and all will come under operating activity for a bank so this has come as a question so loan that you have give to, given to the customer loan repaid to the customer usually it will come under investing activity but now it's coming under operating activity as a bank and then interest or dividend paid or interest uh, sorry interest or dividend received or interest paid all these will also come as operating activity and here there is one more which is deposit accepted or repaid so related to deposit also it will come under operating activity only because this deposits giving loans and earning interest or giving interest all these are their core activities this is what they do on day to day basis these are principal generating activities principal revenue generating activities so you have to take them as an operating activity only especially for banks okay and then they are saying that this uh, dividend which is being paid no this will form part of financing activity only this will form part of financing activity only for uh, fi also because what happens is that uh, so when you are um, raising shares or when you are raising money it is for financing only and not for any other reason so when you are paying any dividend on it that will also go under financing activity only okay i hope you understood this whereas if you see if you are giving away loan and for for that sorry if you're taking some loan and for that if you're giving some interest as loan is bank something bank that takes loans almost you know all the time correct yeah so any interest that you're going to pay on such bank loan all considered as your operating activity okay and then next you have so this was all about how you have to deal with your bank and bank's cash flows okay so what will come as operating and what will go under financing we have understood next next they're saying is all the non cash transactions not non cash items non cash transaction i'm not talking about depreciation here okay it will be excluded from cfs that means what happened like a barter transaction you are giving a car in exchange of a pp so like that if some barter transaction you are doing where there is no cash involved such transaction will not come under cfs itself okay done next is these are some examples or question uh, related points and i have told which activity it is so if you are receiving interest on loan given to suppliers or employees if you are given loan to suppliers or employees who in turn tomorrow are going to help in making those goods or services and if you are receiving some interest from them for the loan that you are giving that are that will come under operating but now if you are giving it to subsidiary company it's not going to help you in making your goods and services okay so it's more like a investment that you are doing that you are giving loan to them so that in the future you'll be earn you will be able to earn interest from it so that will come under investing activity you see it as an investment where you can earn more profit from okay 
next is refund of income tax received okay so you have paid an income tax and on that excess you have paid so you are receiving a refund on it so income tax paid where did we write we wrote in operating activity so refund of income tax received will also come under operating activities only okay next is bank overdraft and cash credit both of this you will sometimes think that maybe this is a cash and cash equivalent the answer is no in your question in your ici study material your bank overdraft that means you have overdrawn the bank limit okay or you have taken some cash and credit for a short period these both will come under financing activity only because here you are raising money so through some form okay you don't have money so you are withdrawing more from bank and raising money from there okay so that will come under your financing activity next is short term deposits which is greater than 3 months it's short term short term means usually it means 12 months or less right but it is greater than 3 months then it will come under investing activity now usually um you know you may think that this short term deposit may come under cash and cash equivalents but here you have to assume that this will be not uh, you know here the what do you say the time period here will be more than 3 months maturity more than 3 months so it goes under investing otherwise if it's less than 3 months it would have come under cash and cash equivalents because there we read the point what was the point that you know any uh, highly liquid marketable securities that today you go and in cash you will get uh money tomorrow it's like that only deposits are today you go and you don't want to encash it easily you can encash the deposit and there will be no change in value also so it fulfills the criteria of cash and cash equivalents but here we assume that it is more than 3 months so here that's why it is an investing activity that means this uh, deposits you are going to encash only after 3 months and then next is insurance claim received towards loss of fa due to fire so here if it's any if, suppose insurance claim you have received because of some inventory that has got damaged due to fire that would go under operating activity but here the what has gotten damage the fixed asset has gotten damage so for that if you are receiving some insurance claim it is going to go under investing activity only because all long term assets are dealt under investing activity only and then so in sometimes in question what they will do is they will tell you that invest interest received okay um uh, interest received on tds or sorry it is interest received after tds is 90000 rupees tds that you have deducted is 10000 and the in interest income was 1 lakh that means here they are saying that your income was 1 lakh then you paid 10000 tds on it and ref less what i mean the rest of it what you have in your hand is 90000 okay so here when you are showing in your uh, Uh, presenting in your cash flow statement what you do is which activity this interest is in or interest income is that you decide okay mostly it will be related to investing activity only so in investing activity which figure will you show 90000 10000 or 1 lakh what you will do is first is 1 lakh you will show as interest income as in cash inflow then the tds you will show as a cash outflow so in under investing activity you will show that 1 lakh i have received then 10000 i have paid as tds directly 90000 you should not show directly 90000 you should not show first you have to show this 1 lakh as inflow 10000 as outflow and then you will that's how you are going to present it okay so i hope you understood this point also then final point is that whatever cash flows are there it should be presented on gross basis only you should not net off the pay payments and receipts which are there you cannot do so payments are high uh, sorry receipts are high payments are less so 100 rupees of receipt 50 payments so 100 minus 50 50 rupees you are showing as a cash flow answer is no always you have to present it on gross basis only you should not net off receipts and payments you have to show it separately only okay so this was there yes so i hope i have covered everything and uh, i hope you have understood cash flow statement if you have any doubt please let me know that in the comment section below the notes will be available on my telegram channel and uh, the second part of this video will be coming soon please make sure to watch that for getting a complete understanding and yes guys i hope you found it helpful if you did please make sure to like this video and also share and subscribe to the channel and also do leave your feedback down below because that gives me motivation to upload more and more and with more enthusiasm yes thank you so much